Hello, YouTube. <laughs> oh, boy. In our last episode, I was um, getting ready to put the new ceiling on the RV on good enough to try to finish up the RV. Then I noticed this particular wall here had water damage. This isn't recent. They've already fixed the leak, which is good because there's no new wet spots. But obviously, this wall is all rotted out. And I'm not going to rip it all out. I know some of you, like previously, say I need to rip everything out and do everything. We wouldn't be nearly done right now if um, if I did all that. Okay, the RV's pretty functional and I think it looks okay. And it's still not done. Uh, I'm working on aesthetics right now. But we got the major issues like leaking under control. I think the mold's under control. And now I just need to finish this overhead cab area here. But before I can put up the um, the ceiling, I have to get the walls done. Just like I had to do here. So, this is not a straight piece. So it's got a weird, not a weird, but a certain angle that I have to try to reproduce. And I've got to try to cut a piece out that fits right through here and it has a window right in the middle. And what I'm thinking of doing is using the same panel, paneling type stuff here. This panel of wood thingy, fake wood. And just doing that whole wall. The other side, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to add additional work for myself, I don't think. And once that's up, then I think we can do the ceiling. But until this wall is fixed... See, if I try to put the ceiling up, I have to put a beam there to hold things in place. And it becomes kind of complicated. Although I could do it. And then just deal with that one wall later. But I think it's going to be better to do the wall first. That way the ceiling can go up. I can seal everything back up and uh, close things out but that's what we're looking at right now uh instead of just putting the ceiling up which i was getting ready to do you can see i moved everything and have it ready to go and it looks like we just got a new side project which is fixing the overhead cap wall area and then um then we can do the ceiling I'm also planning on debating which way, you know, I want as the head of the bed. And I, I'm thinking I'm going to shift things so that this side is the head of the bed and that side is the foot. The reason for that is the TV is over here. So this TV can tilt. So you could be in your little private overhead cab room here and you have TV access. So this TV can tilt and, and be viewed if you're laying with your head this way. And what I'm going to put on this side is um, some drawers and stuff. I'm debating... I was going to buy some drawers from Goodwill, but ended up um, going with um, nothing. <laughs> because I'm, I'm going to custom build a little, a little cabinet on that end. I think I'll make a cabinet that comes out so you can put some clothes or items up there for this overhead room. And I'm debating if I'm going to be putting um, cabinets up here, top cabinets, making some custom stuff. Or just leaving it as is, you know, the edged wall there. But it would be nice to have a little area here so somebody could store their clothes and other items. And um, I think it would be nice to keep the window, you know, access available. Trying to figure out what to do with blinds and stuff is another issue for those, um, the overhead cabinet windows. My apologies that this camera is having a hard time focusing here. But it is... Um, starting to get nearly dark you know it looks pretty bright in here but this camera's evidently having issues so hopefully uh we'll be able to get this wall up before it gets dark today although i don't know i'm debating if i really want to deal with it right now if i try to cut this weird piece it could be very difficult it might be better to split it you know and just do the bottom portion then do the top portion i may do that Although it'd be nice, to, it'd be a lot easier to have one piece, one solid piece. The other alternative is to run um, the wainscoting, wainscoting along this bottom portion, then do the top portion. You know, piece it out and, and put it in like that. Which the the reason I'm not wanting to do a single piece is because I have to measure all this and try to cut it with that diagonal. And I didn't, you know, I didn't measure the angle. And some of you are like, well, get a cardboard template and stuff. I don't really feel like doing that, you know. Although that's probably the easiest way is to try to make a template somehow and um, get the cuts. But 
cutting something at that angle and a big piece like that means cutting it outside of the RV and that means exposing myself as um, doing some heavy duty work in here which could get me in trouble with the park so I'm trying to avoid that so I've been cutting inside the RV lately we'll see what happens so stay tuned all right to make matters even worse look what I just noticed hard to reach up here but I don't know if you can see this but this is all dry rotted out so that means the framing of this window in the front cab area is missing so it's more work what I'm gonna have to do is rip this wall out just like I had to do the uh, the living room area and build this framing out before I do anything else. So all this is gonna be ripped out. Putting up the overhead ceiling cab just became bigger, exponentially bigger. So I'll be, um, I guess, trying to get a two by two to go across here and mount it in and lock it into place. Then I'll be doing this wall. And I'm debating, and I think I might use Wayne's coating <laughs> just to go up to the, um, the edge of the window sill area to match the rest of the RV. By the way, I don't know if you see these little white panels. Those were picked up as trash from work. They were throwing them out, and I'm going to be using them as, um, I don't know what it's called, just a little piece to, to finish, like trimming. I hope I have enough of it. I tried to go look at trimming at Home Depot, and you'd be surprised at how expensive that is. The little pieces of trimming, like, they come in, like, 20-foot sections. And one 20-foot section is, I think, about 10 to 12 $15 or $18. I'm like, $18 for one little 20-foot thing? If I did the whole RV with the trimming that they have, it could end up costing me a couple hundred dollars just to trim. I'm like, that's just trim. For two or $300, I'd rather use that to buy, like, an air conditioner or a generator or something. Not a little trimming, just to make it look nicer. So, luckily, I have some of the, these little plastic thingies that I threw it I mean I was able to get out of the trash can that they threw away at work so I'm planning on using those as trim and hopefully there's enough but we're gonna um, rip this whole thing out I wasn't going to do that I didn't plan on doing this but it looks like it's something I have to do now so hopefully the other side looks pretty dry so we're not gonna have to do that on that side but this side definitely, the wall has to come out again, which is not something I'm looking forward to. I'll rip this whole panel out, put in the piece, and try to seal this up. It, but it's not a straight piece. It's got that weird angle right there, which is angles I'm not very good at reproducing. So, what started off as simply re replacing the putting the roof back on, or the ceiling back on, has now become ripping out the wall. As you can see, I have uh, ripped off that panel right there. Decided to break it off right there, and you can see this wood is... They had, um, I guess this was the old RV wallpaper that was here. I'm not gonna rip all this apart. But I am going to remove stuff like this. You can see it just flaked right off. And um, see how much dry rot there is here. There was a, is that a screw or something that was holding everything into place? So just, what that was, looks like uh, something. But you can see this is all completely um, dry rotted. Yeah, it's pretty bad. There's like nothing holding it up. This is just floating. So all this is going to be um, cleared out. We'll put in a new a new piece. And then, um, I said I'm not ripping apart the whole window. <laughs> it's not leaking right now. That's good. But we're just going to try to cut a piece. I'm going to see how far that goes on that end over there. I'm breathing all this crap, which is not good. But we're going to... Um, just do like we did all the other windows. You can see what we did here, and it seems to be holding and not leaking anymore. You know, so we'll fix this and um, looking for any holes or anything that I can push through because if there's a hole, 
definitely needs to um, be replaced. If there's not, I'm not gonna make a hole. <laughs> I am not into making more work for myself. So we'll just close this up. Try to make it, you know, somewhat clean here. Put a new wall. Then try to get the ceiling back up. But uh, just so you know why there's a delay in doing this kind of stuff. You can see when I'm trying to work up here, I have to move all this stuff. So stuff gets moved here, into the hallway, into the bedroom, everywhere. And then, you know, that means like tonight, I have to move it all back when I try to go to sleep. And that's why things take so long now. Because like, you know, all these parts and things. And also I've been moving things, trying to get it organized. By the way, I don't know if you see this keyboard. <laughs> I just thought I'd go ahead and talk about this for those of you who are curious. I went over to um, Goodwill uh, today or yesterday and saw this keyboard for like 20 bucks. It's a Yamaha PSR3. And I decided to go ahead and pick it up so that I would have a keyboard, an electronic keyboard. Because I normally like music and stuff even though I don't really know how to play. And I think I've been wanting to play music ever since I was like 11 years old. And um, I think I'm going to make it a goal this year to learn how to play the piano, sort of, by ear. So maybe we'll do videos on that and you can watch my progress as I attempt to learn how to play piano by ear. Because I think it's, uh, it's one of those things that I've been wanting to do ever since I was a kid. And I would get keyboards, but I never ever took the time to actually sit down and try to train my fingers to, to do the chords and, and learn everything. So... I'm going to try it now, and you know, once things settle down a little bit, but I've been playing with it. It's a pretty cool keyboard. I'll do another episode on that rather than uh, cut into this wall thing right here. But anyhow, um, this is, uh, just became exponentially larger <laughs> project. So stay tuned. Hopefully uh, I won't run into too many other issues, but I am going to clean out that little area under there. Try to find 2 by 4 or I'll have to buy some more that can fit under there. And then... Um, get that done, put a new wall in, and um, call it a day. I'm not going to do it tonight, though, because it's getting ready to get dark, and I am exhausted. Um, the other thing I, I'm planning for the overhead is I'm debating if I want to make a wall, a fake wall here, coming straight down, so that the room, instead of having that area up front, has a flat panel wall here. And what I'm going to do with that new area is use it for storage. I'm going to make shelving so you can put you know, the person who's in this overhead area can store items up there. So make use of space for storing things. Um, the issue is if I, if I go all the way up to the corner there, right there, and make a line down. So we have a triangle, a right triangle going out, which is about a foot and a half, two feet, well, two foot and a half long. You can see here the edge of this is only about eight inches. So it may not be enough. I mean, you can see the, the, what I'm saying is, see the mattress here? It pushes in and it gives me a little ledge here, which I was planning on keeping so you could put remote controls and other stuff here. But I may push, force things out this way to the edge here. So there is no ledge. There's no ledge here. And then this space over there will be like where the ledge will be. And that ledge is going to become storage. So maybe I won't go out all the way to the edge here, but only go out like that to there somewhere. And then have a little tiny storage area. Because I think it's important to have storage for this overhead area. For somebody up there, they can store books, um, things that they might need up there, as well as clothes and other items. Because this is going to become a second bedroom. We got basically a, a, a second bedroom, an overhead bunk bedroom. And we'll have the head over this way, feet over that way. TV could go this way. By the way, I did buy a universal TV remote. The cost was, I think, um, I don't know, it was like $10 or $15. $10 or $15 just for a remote. But I got this one that, um, it says RCA, but it says it defaults to Samsung. So I can, like, hit this button now, and the TV will actually come on, in theory. It's blinking right now, like it's wanting to come on. We'll see if the TV uh, took a while to warm up and come on, but... So we can watch TV, sort of, when it comes in. The antenna needs to be moved and stuff. And some of you might be wondering why I don't, um... Three, 
13 vision hearing. Yeah, some of you might be wondering why I don't um, install or use an outside antenna, which should give me better reception. The issue is I don't want to feel like buying and installing an outside antenna. TV is not too critical for me. And the antennas inside seem to pick up enough channels, at least in this area, that I'm fine with, with what it picks up. And now with this remote, the Samsung TV is fully functional. And this other TV here, it doesn't do digital. It only does analog signal, but I haven't been using it as a TV. I've been using it as a um, antenna saw get the computer to come on here. I've been using it to get the signal to pop up here, but I've been using it as a giant monitor so that I can um, turn it on here and turn it on. There it goes, HDMI. So it'll come on and work as a monitor and you can see I'm doing some administrative uh, work on the living in a van. What's, uh, I don't know if you've been following the living in a van uh, page drama that I'm currently going through. We have like um, I know this is a, uh, an episode about the the wall repair on the RV, but I just wanted to show you stuff I deal with on a day by day basis that you guys don't see. I literally spend hours dealing with um, the living in a van you, uh, Facebook group as administrator. We've got like more than twenty thousand members, and I actually did try to do a request out there for people to just come help and hit the subscribe button to the Pay It For channel to try to get 1,000 um, subs so we can start broadcasting live, which I didn't think would be that big a deal to have people just, you know, it doesn't cost them anything, just a second, a minute, to come over, hit subscribe. They don't even have to tune in or anything. To help me out as I'm trying to launch a service that could actually help the van dwellers. Well, out of my call out for help, um, we only got like, I think a total of 10 or 15 people come over. Out of 20,000 people, 10 or 15 responded. That's very sad. I ended up getting a bit depressed over that. Um, and ended up posting a video, announcing it again. And um, still haven't gotten too many responses. People were just ignoring the admin. So the Living in a Van Facebook group is proving to be very depressing for me. You know, um, I handle a bunch of complaints on there. People you know, report postings, have issues with each other, just to show you the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. Like right now, I ended up doing a, a screening to see if people would help. And um, here you can see what I did was um, started screening people to get into the uh, YouTube channel for Living in a Van. And then I made it mandatory to try to get the count up uh, for people to come on the Pay It Forward channel on, on YouTube. And you can see they have to answer these questions. A lot of people say, no, they don't want to help. Or someone say they'll help, but they don't want to subscribe. They'll help the channel, but they don't want to subscribe, even though that's what's being asked. And then some people say they don't have a response on whether or not they agree with the rules. But I've got like close to 100 people in the queue right now who want to join the Living in a Van um, Facebook group. And a lot of them say, I would like help. I need help. But then my request for them to help with just hitting a subscribe button, they don't want to do. Tell me how discouraging that is. And um, out of the 20,000 people on um, the Facebook group, we've had a couple people um, step in to try to help. So they've started make, launching their own campaign to link the Pay It Forward uh, YouTube channel. Thank you, people who are doing that. Um, to try to get people to at least read that because they're not reading the admin postings, which is crazy. You know, ad the admin of the group that you're using is telling you something and putting out a request and people are just ignoring it. And then when they need something, they come to the admin to ask for help. So it's been very discouraging. But um, all these no responses, people tell me what they want to do. They need all, look at this. I am living in my van full time. I need all the help I can get, especially with food storage and general organization. also need tips balancing Wanderlust with finances. But no responses on whether or not they'll follow the rules and no responses on whether or not they'll help with um, just getting the the paid forward channel launch so that I can provide more services. So what we're having is people coming in wanting help, but they won't even help the group to help them. <laughs> it's very discouraging. So right now I'm, I'm like, I've been screening these people. I haven't deleted all their requests, even though some people say I should. Um, we're up to 
I think in just one day, I deal with maybe 150 to 200, 300 requests for people coming in. Out of that, since I've started screening people and you know asking questions and stuff, I get a response from from these people, but they say they will not join or they don't want to help, but they want to come in and they're asking for help. They're like, any help you can send my way would be appreciated. I need help with this. I need help with that. But no, I don't want to help you with um, uh, just hitting the subscribe button to the group so that the group can get resources to help me. Tell me if this makes any sense. It's very frustrating on my end, and I don't know if you can hear that in my voice, but I'm like, holy schmoly, 20,000 people who supposedly are benefiting, but um, don't want to even hit a subscribe button. It's too much trouble for them. And... Um, very discouraging. So I may need to take a break from Facebook and just let those pile up. But I've been, um, the issue though, some people do out of like, I think I said like about 196 people. I had about three or four people that did read the stuff and did subscribe and gave me their um, profile names and stuff. So I know they subscribed and whatnot. And I admitted them into the group. So that's what I'm doing right now is filtering. But I haven't deleted these people because um, basically these are people who need help. You know, they don't want to help anyone help them, which makes no sense to me. And some people would say, well, just delete them. Well, the whole Living in a Van group was created for people who need help. And even though these people don't want to help anyone but themselves, you know, even though I've made it very clear that the Pay It Forward channel isn't like a normal YouTube channel. It is a community that we're going to be setting up. And the community will help its own first. And it's going to be helping people who have helped the community to get to the point where we're able to generate income and make um, basically headwind in getting resources and stuff available. So keep in mind, I am watching and paying attention to who is participating, who is helping, who is hurting, and who is indifferent. I don't know, that there was that story about Chicken, I don't know, it was Chicken Little, it's not Chicken Little, it's Chicken Little's Sky's Falling. But it was Henny Penny, who, who will help me break, uh, um, who will help me grow this wheat? Who will help me harvest the wheat? Who will help me make the bread or grind the flour? Who will help me make the bread? And no one wants to help. But as soon as the bread is baked, all these people come running asking for a handout. <laughs> That's what's happening here on this channel. Not on this channel, but on the Pay It Forward channel and on the Living in a Van Facebook group. Very, very discouraging. Because that's a story that was taught in first grade. I know, because I used to teach it. So, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, several members on the Living in a Van group have been pushing to try to get people here because they're actually paying attention and was reading my stuff as well as watching the YouTube videos and stuff. And they've sent a few more people, so we're up to... I don't know how many people we're up to right now. I think we're up to... Um, 270 or so, I think, maybe. Let me double check here. Um, so here, the posting you can see is pinned right now to the top of the page. We have 91 people because I think I've admitted a whole bunch of people in. Um, we have the, the, the stuff is pinned right now with me telling it. And you can see only 23 people responded. We have 29 comments. A lot of them are repeat people. Um, several people have tried to jump in and help by making their own postings. And here was a second posting on it. Uh, very few responses. Well, actually, it's the same one, 23. But it's been pinned to the top of the page. People just skip it and ignore it and, you know, post whatever they post on the... Um, here, Sarah. Sarah is actually trying to help. She evidently created a really nice banner. You know, she did this on her own, by the way. And Sarah, you have been noted. You know, I am paying attention to who is actually part of the community and not just along for the ride. So, you know, I do believe that the Pay It Forward channel will be successful. It's just tough getting it going. Once we're successful, I suspect a lot of people will want to jump on. But remember, we are paying attention to who has been there and is there and is trying to build the community. So, you know, this is something she decided to do on her own because she saw what was going on. It was very discouraging for me. So, I appreciate it, Sarah, and I think even David Smith even made an announcement trying to get people to come. So, when I made my announcement, I think I got a whopping six or seven people come forward, you know, and join. They've made their responses, and I think another ten people have come, ten to twelve people have come. 
Let me see if I can, uh, if she linked it. Click it to see if it all, give me the link or is it stuck here? Okay, so this is the pay it forward. I'm gonna see how many people we actually have. I know this is a segment on the, um, the overhead cap, but you can see it's dark now. And just wanted to give you an update on what's been going on on this end. I've been working on the RV, but I've also been trying to develop this. We're up to 276. So 276 people have joined the community. Some of these people are just here by request just to be nice. But it, it, I, I'd say since I started pushing it the last couple of days, I think we are up by actually about 40, 40 people or so have come over. But that's out of 40 out of 20,000 which to me is just overwhelmingly sad. But um, we're going to press forward. The, the good news is this. We hit over, you know, we only need 1,000 before we can go live. We're almost at 300. At 333, we'll be one-third of the way there. So we're almost one-third of the way there. We've um, crossed over the 25% point, which was 200, 250 would be 25%. So we're more than a quarter of the way there. We're almost one third of the way there. So that's how I'm choosing to look at it because otherwise I would just pull my hair out and, and throw my arms up and say, boy, this stinks. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, take care. Thank you, those of you who are working so hard to try to get this channel to launch because I think you understand the importance of this channel uh, and the kind of resource it can be. And, you know, what people do not understand or may not understand is that this isn't just a channel. It's a community I'm trying to build. And not just a community, but a community of people who actually care for one another and will help one another in need. You know, so that the people who are part of it don't ever have to feel like they're alone. And that's the, the concern is so many people want assistance but aren't willing to help anyone else, which is very sad. Well, until next time, everyone, take care. God bless you all. I hope I didn't depress you too much. I know I myself have to take a deep breath and um, continue to move forward, even if it feels like I'm butting my head against the wall. Take care, everybody.